What makes Apex tick when developers deep dive into the servers and net code? Apex lead engineer Rick Rickle Saucer explores common online issues that players face, their causes, and the efforts to address them. He says hello, I am Rick uh, Saucer, a lead engineer at Apex Legends, and today I want to offer you a bit of insight into the online infrastructure that supports Apex Legends. In the past, we haven't often talked about pub pub talk publicly about our servers, netcode, or online infrastructure, Apex Legends, and today we want to begin to change that. In short, today we want to address the following, share a bit about how we're working to improve your online experience, acknowledge and explain some of the co common online issues or connectivity problems you may encounter, specifically address commonly asked questions about topics like slow-mo servers, hit registration and how lag compensation system works offers comprehensive notes on the server tick rate explain our thinking behind what it affects and what it doesn't a warning this post is long because it's intended to truly deep dive into the online infrastructure for apex something we've seen players requesting for a long time we're thinking of this on a starting point of a longer conversation so even though we do not cover a lot up ground here, there's probably plenty of topics, DDoS attacks, server crashing bugs, etc. So before I continue here, I'm going to try and get this screen, uh, this window up here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, let me see if I have it here. Uh, there we go. Perfect. I'm going to slip this behind. Excuse me, excuse me. Put the screen. Here we go. That's not what I'm looking to do. I want to fit. Stretch the screen. There we go. All right. So now that we have that fixed, let's go on. For those of, and, and I might skip over things just to skip over certain words, just to continuity flow. For those of you who are ready to geek out about netcode, servers, tick rates, and more, welcome. Let's kick these things off by talking about some of the recent improvements we have shipped. Boosting our response time with performance metrics. Season six, we introduced a performance display. It looks like this, and it looks like this gives basic information about your performance. I've turned this on in game. I don't think it's active right away but you can turn it on turn it on in your settings and it's actually insightful helps you know what's going on if your fps is hitting the right things and latency and all that in and out our bandwidth consumes in and out are the bandwidth consumed by the game in kilobytes you also have latency in milliseconds and packet loss and packet choke are rendered as percent uh packet per set packets per second um yeah those numbers help you and help us understand what you're experiencing while playing in other words we can translate what you're feeling into actionable and technical information by this addition we hear from players that something was off but they couldn't always tell us much beyond that now you can accurately say i have 10 percent packet loss 300 millisecond latency etc it changes everything because those numbers are often the best possible indication of what's actually going on i'll come back to this point later on while working on the performance di display we also began tracking key performance metrics for players and servers this means that if someone reports a problem we can pull down their match and see everyone's data in the game at that time including information about the specific server hosting the game this represented our first big push to give personalized and targeted means of investigating to our team. We had some success with this approach, but we think that in the long term, it does not scale. First, we have to hear from you, then the dispatch an engine, then dispatch an engineer to see where the issue comes from, and then depending where the problem lies, we attempt to fix. Obviously, this is not uh, like to say scalable because 
you know they gotta wait until you send in the information and then they gotta send it out you might get frustrated not even reported etc in recent seasons we've gone to leveraging the help of our awesome data science team to batch and crunch i.e gather information and analyze one week of data at a time to detect excessive packet loss and server performance issues this approach has been paying off already for example we found out that one piece of the network equipment in our data center was faulty causing every game hosted on a handful of servers to be have horrible network performance the server themselves were fine but the hardware that connected players to the server in question was causing massive packet loss we encountered plenty of examples like this the main benefit we get from system systematically analyzing data is that it let us cross-reference metrics and players to find patterns we we so weeks after week we can confidently say if the health of the server fleet is better or worse data analyst is also a great tool to help our uh, partners fix issues when it's something outside of our control instead of saying something is wrong we can specifically say this is wrong which saves time for everyone involved by the by the way you can opt out of this if you like just go into in gameplay and then usage sharing in the settings menu so i don't know why you would want to opt out of this um this helps the game so it's not like they're actually gathering information beyond that so automation helps a lot but it's not enough indeed with this approach we still somewhat slow to react to the problems we need to wait a week for most data to be reliably gathered and reported to us. Then it can often take another week for a full investigation to be conducted. From the moment you start noticing the problem, it may take us up to two weeks to find a fix and even more to deploy the solution if it requires a server patch. We can do better, we will do better. So let's talk about the solution. First of all, in addition to weekly reports, we move to a real-time alerting it will give us the same level of information that we have now, just faster. We'll be able to fix hardware problems right away and start investigating on working on the patch. We understand the frustration of having to wait and we try actively to shrink the time between an alert, an alert and fix. Uh, second, we're going to introduce this new server ID uh, called SID to, to the performance display that will allow us to find the server you're playing on faster. At the moment, you give us a time and a date, and we correlate that with the data we have on you to find the server you were playing on. Soon, we won't have to do that. Okay? Uh, we expect both of those above solutions to start rolling out during the upcoming season. The result for the, Apex, uh, the result for players will be speedier re resolution for server issues, sometimes twice as fast as currently. Deep dive into common issues. Now, the fun part is the let's broadly categorize server issues you may encounter. The list below is not exhaustive, but I hope it answers most of your questions. The server is running in slow motion. Everybody loves this one. Our server, our servers are running at 20 hertz. This means that they simulate the entire world state once every 50 milliseconds, one second or a thousand milliseconds divided by 20. Uh, we don't speak about FPS frames per second when discussing server performance because a server does not display pictures. Instead, a server computes states, but the underlying principle is the same. It takes user input from the network, runs the physics, sends back the new world states to clients, then repeats. If this process takes more than 50 milliseconds consistently, your game will slow down to permit the server to finish the simulation. Thus, you get into a slow mo server. So basically, um, what they're talking about here is um, because it's a live service game, every match that you go into has a certain amount of calculations, um, set parameters that they set it to. So a tree is supposed to be here. Uh, uh, the ship is supposed to be flying in a certain direction. Care package is dropping in a certain area, et cetera, et cetera. So these are always refreshing every, uh, I guess, every 50 milliseconds that they're talking about here. Um, I don't understand the math here. Nobody knows about that. They could let me know. Uh, a view of the frame time for a server. Okay, this is frame time. Column five is the 50 millisecond uh, mark. Every time, everything under is faster. You can see that this server was stable and faster than required. Server frame time bad match. In comparison, the server never met frame time. I'm mostly running around 200 millisecond frame time. So four times slower, typically the slow mo server.
There are a number of things that can cause this, but it's sometimes linked to machines in a data center not performing as they should. Think about an over, underclocked CPU overheating, etc. So they can, it's computers, they're running 24 hours a day, something can happen to them. When we detect those, we usually remove those machines. This means we literally call up the service provider, point out the problem with the given machine and ask them to take it offline. Uh, the real-time detection solution mentioned earlier is that in this blog should reduce this issue considerably. When we roll it out during the upcoming season, we heavily invest in solving the issues. We're going to keep a close eye on this. But here's something that's interesting. They call this the service provider. So basically, EA or Apex doesn't necessarily own servers all across the world. So they may pay third-party service providers um, in different parts of the world. For instance, how Amazon has Amazon servers. Um, and in, in uh, I can't remember, Arizona, I think it's, it is. So they may have, games might be playing on servers that are not even owned by EA. They lease, they're leasing it from, from another company. So that's an interesting insight there that they didn't really go into there. Uh, my latency is going up and down. If you play on Wi-Fi, we can't do much for you. I've been telling people this, you don't have it hardwired. I remember when I was playing on Wi-Fi, it's not a good thing. Otherwise, rapidly changing latencies can sometimes be related to our server performance. We also we all know that even if a game typically runs at 60 FPS, that can change a lot when a lot is happening on the screen. Even if you're only dropping a few frames, you feel it. It works similarly for servers. Error, error automatic detection does not help much with determining the root cause of the problem. Historically, we have to create, recreate the conditions for the slowdown on the dev server, but it's pretty time consuming and always a bit of a shot in the dark. Your machine probably doesn't run on the same server hardware or with the same settings, so it's hard to replicate anything one-to-one. -one. Thankfully, our operation teams produce a tool to let us get what we call a RP or RPROF file, just basically a view of what the server is doing during every frame, ballistic simulation, network in and out, player movements, etc. etc. Thanks to our prop files, we are able to know what's slowing things down and the engineers can start optimizing. Usually the problem has something to do with increased performance demands introduced by new features season to season. Interesting. So this is why we usually have season eight drop or season seven drop or whatever, you're gonna see some some issues because they're putting more demands on the server. Uh, you may remember, for example, the slowdown of the champion screen at the beginning of the game during season seven and eight. It was caused by all the players in the match spawning at the same place on top of and even overlapping each other. And you can even see them because of the UI. Uh, physics simulation really hates having the same object overlapping with the others and other physics engines was trying to get all the bodies away from each other, causing massive CPU spikes. So basically, if you don't know this with Battle Royals, for instance, they basically spawn everybody across the map into the game before you even drum. So even though you're seeing it from the ship view when you're about to drop, they're technically everybody's just floating in the air. You just don't see it. So if the game is populating where everybody's overlapping on the same point, it's going to overload the CPU. Um, so this is just given the data for that. I don't really know how to read that now. Detailed view of the US West region that allows us to detect faulty machines. X axis is time. Out outages are very clear on the chart. Some machines are affected while others remain stable. We anticipate that our usage of our prof files is going to be better help us optimize new features. We add to the game and reduce latency more generally in the future. Lowering latency for all players is a big focus for us and better tools like this are crucial to helping us get there. Having a lot of packet loss and packet choke. This is extremely tricky. It's probably not your fault. It's also usually not ours either. It has to do with the internet traffic travels from your box to our data center and back to you. At the beginning, your network traffic is from your ISP network. Your ISP may have an outage or where your information, uh, along with other customer information, is being lost, dropped. This results in game client not knowing what is happening with the players around you or the game server not knowing what you want to shoot your gun 
that you want to shoot your gun or move in a certain direction. There's also a connection between ISP network servers, uh, network and our data centers. Uh, problems can pop up anywhere along this line. When things go smoothly, we call this a process peering, peer to peer. A lot of time peering problems resolve when the connection, connection between two networks of a weak link. There can be multiple hops like this along the way. And then of course, all the information from the Apex servers need to get back to you. Often taking a different route, you can start to understand why this can get complex. If we want to help resolve this, the first thing for us to do is to be able to detect where the outage is. This is hard to automate because we need data from you and we need data from the server. We can look at the issue from both perspectives and try to probe along the way, to see where the problem is. As of today, we ask players to provide some kind of network traces and we do the same on our side from the data centers to try and detect where the congestion point is. This is extremely time consuming and slow to resolve because our depending on our findings, we have to negotiate with different business partners all over the world. Uh, we're hopefully we're hopeful that automation can help improve this process and we have some improvements in the work that are still in the early stages. These guys have to be like creating software and creating um, hardware stuff to really deal with these issues. When it comes to network traffic problems like the ones we're discussing, one good thing is that the problem tends to happen in bulk instead of being tied to a particular individual. This means that fixing the problem for one affected player usually unblocks a lot for the others. We're also actively reducing the bandwidth used by the game, which helps mitigate the problems. Um, yeah, so yeah, if there's the files are able to compress in a way that is less bandwidth uh, for those that are running on slower ISP networks and different things like that, you're not going to have as much issues. Um, but again, this is this can change from time to time. Uh, this network trace showing a latency of one of our pro players from his internet modem to one of our servers. We probe multiple times to assess the true health of the internet connection. You see that he's able to enjoy the game in the best conditions at 31 millisecond latency, but the worst is 522 milliseconds. So in this case, his game experience is extremely bad because his connection assists oscillates with a difference of 500 milliseconds. Connection is bit shaken on his local ISP network. For the average, shows us is pretty rare. The average of 31 milliseconds for the worst of 264 milliseconds must be an isolated incident. Then we see a spike of latency between local ISP and the ISP1, which is one of the nodes between the player and the game server. We can be nearly certain that the packet loss and routing issue between the two is outside of our control, but we can inform those of the partners of we can inform those partners of this problem. Usually it's in everyone's interest to resolve the situation. Interesting. I'm being killed by while be I am being killed while behind a door wall and sometimes I roll back to the previous position. So this is rubber banding. It's a spicy topic. It has to do with lag compensation. In every game since the dawn of online gaming, the main problem for developers to solve is how to take real time action into something that is not operating in real time. Essentially, everything you do online games is delayed because of the latency to the server and back. A lot of things add to this input rendering and yes, even server tick rate. Uh, even worse, on top of all that it is your opponent who almost certainly plays with a different level of latency than yours. With all this, our servers have constantly look at not only what's happening for you and your opponent at that moment, but also what is happening from both pers your perspective at the time both of you input your actions. Lag conversation is the art of merging slightly different experiences into one shared reality, which is crazy that they could even pull this off to begin with. There is no perfect solution. There's not one truth. At the end of the day, the service sort of a time machine. It constantly rolls back the world state to see if you shot, if your shot hit someone and then updates the world for everyone accordingly. They're doing this on the fly, which is crazy. To better illustrate this principle, my colleague Earl Hammond wrote a little essay about fairness and lag compensation and how it all works in Leg Apex Legends. I'm sharing it with you below. Let's go through the various scenarios with two players in Apex Legends called high and low. Let's give high a high ping of 300 milliseconds and a low 
and low, a low ping of 50 milliseconds. The difference in their pings is 250 milliseconds. What happens if they shoot at each other at the same real world time? Well, low shot will arrive at the server long before high shot. So the low has the advantage. Interesting. What happens if one of them rounds a corner so that they can suddenly see each other? Well, low has the advantage here as well. Low is less in the past, into the past, so they get to see high first. Once again, low has the advantage due to their ping. This adds the av advantage where the low's bullets gets the server faster. These cases are fair in the sense that low has the advantage, but the they are fair in the sense that it is reasonable to expect that a player with low ping wouldn't get the advantage in the situation. Now, what happens if low goes behind the corner to get into cover? While well, high is still in the path when low is not covered. So high can shoot low before they get into cover, but low won't find out about it until the high packets, until high's packets have made it to the server and then to low. So basically, he's not going to know until it happens. By this time, low sees that they're safely in cover, yet low still got hit. From low's perspective, this is a bit of, a non <laughs> bit of nonsense. However, this is extremely sym symmetrical to same some of the earlier nonsense that was in Lowe's favor. When Lowe's pops out of the cover to attack high, Low gets to see and shoot high while it appears to high that Low is still in cover. From high perspective, this is a bit of nonsense that they get shot by somebody who is still in cover. This nonsense can be eliminated, can't be eliminated, only transferred between one player or another because of the simple reality that ping is real and players have different amounts of it. Some would suggest that this it is unfair to low that high can shoot them when low thinks they're behind cover. The alternative suggests that high should have to compensate for their high pings themselves. This would require us to implement an unequal and asymmetrical way of handling latency. It feels bad to get shot when you think you're behind cover due to bad ping, which is what can happen to low. It also feels bad to get shot by somebody before you can even see them due to bad ping which is what can happen to high, but the nonsense is distributed symmetrically. <laughs> so you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, basically. Um, so we want to be super clear, not all online games work the way Apex does. Some games also give the advantage to the players with low ping, but we actively choose not to with our system. It's a stance we, we've intentionally taken after looking at the trade-offs and think seriously about the fairness in online competition. To explain our system in simple terms, players with low ping don't always have the advantage over high ping players and sometimes experience nonsense to us. That's a ter <laughs> technical term. That's that's a trade-off which is designed intentionally in our system, but the upside is that you can play Apex Legends and play relatively well even if you're higher than the average latency, which is really important for rural players or for players in regions where connectivity is unstable. We believe we should reduce nonsense at every opportunity, but when we have to deal with less than ideal experiences, uh, we want to do so in a way that is equal and fair to all players. This is the reason that most, almost any time you deal with a bit of nonsense like getting shot while behind a wall or getting hit right as you come around a corner is probably due to unavoidable variance, variations in latency between players and the way our system distributes it. Still, we're computing committed to reducing this at every opportunity we get not only do we want to everyone to have a fair experience we also want you to have fun have a fun one so it's kind of beyond their control but you know if they get an opportunity to fix that they're going to try and do that some shots aren't registering let's talk about hit registration no reg or no registration from a shot means you think you hit your target but your server basically disagreed from your perspective, you get all the sorts of confirmation in the form of blood spray and sounds, but no damage counter shows up. In, shoot, in a shooter like Apex, this is extremely unpleasant. It can happen for a multitude of reasons. Sometimes high latency or pack loss can cause your local simulation to become slightly out of sync with the server. You shot where you saw someone, but actually you were shooting where they have, had been previously. Unfortunately, you don't find that out until your version of the world catches up catches back up. Sometimes it's just a bug with the game's physics simulation to give you an instant feedback. We rely heavily on con concept call prediction. When you shoot, we know the ballistic of a weapon. We can predict where the bullet is going locally without needing to the server to tell you. This makes the game more responsive. 
normally decline and the server agree and the bullets go the where predicted. In the past, we've had some bugs where with the way we were computing ballistics and bullet trajectories, for example, where every weapon with a bullet size that was not at point, like a sniper rifle, for example, the kind of bug. This kind of bug can be gnarly to detect, so we put a visual in place for our playtest to help people spot the issue right away. Sadly, this diagnostic code is too heavy to run in a live game because of bandwidth concerns, so we only rely on internal tests. Um, Every time a no reg happens, we draw the hitbox and the trajectory of the bullet approximately. Trajectory should bend a bit, but not uh, good enough. It is a visual aid for us to know it happened and it helps us when we go look at our server logs. Uh, that's crazy. There's two ways we're making progress here. The first is by constantly digging into different bugs that result in different detection. Hit detection issues we've been developing tools to automate detection as well so we can help developers avoid in introducing any new ones this will be ongoing and continuous effort on our part the second is the work with you when players send us clips of hit detection issues in the action it can help us figure out uh, if there's a bug we can need to address often we realize the clips we get sent actually have to do with latency problems instead of hit detection issue so be sure to check your performance display by reporting a hit reg issue before hit, reporting a hit rag issue. However, as mentioned above, we have found or resolved bugs this way in the past, so reporting can help us make the game better for everyone. Thank you in advance. What about bugs that prevent me from logging in, like CodeNet? CodeNet is a generic error message that the game displays whenever you get timed out of a server. It can be caused by a number of issues, both on our end and yours. In fact, we found that some of the most serious code net bugs and related code leap ish, uh, et cetera, might be more to do with res response services supporting the game that may need to be investigated. Taking a number of steps to reduce the likelihood of a code occurring and may and many players are able to have their situations resolved after contacting our support team. If you are unable to log in and are receiving the code net message or another like it, please consider reporting it to EA help site. Since CodeNet is generic message, it might refer to a number of different problems. We had some success in the recent weeks of addressing some of these, but we know we have more to do. Report those issues to us and we will do our best to resolve them ASAP. Trust us, we hate these bugs as much as you. Uh, server tick rate. Here comes the big one. Everybody talks about this one. We want to tackle it transparently. Plenty of players have asked us about our server tech rate and why we don't simply increase from 20 hertz like some other online shooters have. We explain our tech rate impacts the overall refresh rate of what you see on screen, so this is a totally valid question. However, it is trickier than you might think to compare to one game's tick rate to another. We try to explain why. The tick rate of a server is the number of simulations that the server runs per second. It is fixed numbers. See the section about slow-mo. Apex uses a snapshot based replication model. This mostly means that at the end of every tick, the server saves the world state and replicates it to all clients. This includes a lot of information that allows all the weapons, maps, legends designed to be the highest fidelity. To be successful in Apex Legends, you have to pay attention to what a lot of information happening all over the map. Tactical abilities getting used, passive activating, ultimates popping off, care packages dropping in, a new squad entering with the range, within range of Crypto's drone. We don't want players to miss any of it. And our designers are able to create toys and tools that can be truly global in nature. Many games don't compute full world states at each tick, making it misleading to try to compare one game with another based on a single figure like 20 hertz versus 30 hertz. The question is, what hap what's, what exactly happening during each tick? We want the world to state world state to be as accurate as possible, which is why our servers save the full world state each tick. If we didn't do this, it would probably save some of the CPU costs and servers, but we lose the accuracy in our simulation. But that isn't worth the risk. Put simply. The higher tick rate, the higher the bandwidth sent to all players. If we were to move from 20 hertz servers to 60 hertz servers, it would mean multiplying the bandwidth the game uses by three. As of today, Apex roughly consumes 60 kilobytes a second. At the beginning of the game, 
a ser uh, 60 hertz server would consume 180 kilobytes. That may sound not sound like a lot, but it's quite a bit. And we're always looking for ways to reduce the required bandwidth. But why would it matter if the bandwidth went a little higher? Keeping bandwidth costs low for games is much more critical, say, for video streaming. But high bandwidth application streaming, downloading, etc., jitters or hitches are easy to hide by buffering minutes of the stream. Dropping stream quality, etc. You probably won't be shown on jitter in a download, and you probably don't care that the speed is variable by a few or even a hundredth of a millisecond. Which is true. Games do not have this luxury. Skipping even a couple of 50, 50 milliseconds intervals can start to feel bad. Skipping a few more can send you in the death spiral of having to send you bigger and bigger updates to catch you back up. There are no exceptions to not getting you those updates because your client needs a perfect state of the world to be accurate. <clears throat> Above examples shows how comparing tick rate between games is complicated because the information contained in each tick varies. There's another complication as well, which is the limits on its inputs that the service can receive and sends aren't always the same, even if they have the same tick rate. To be specific, in many games, if a server runs at 60 hertz, it means that the client can only send 60 hertz inputs. If you run at 60 frames per second, it's fine, but if a client runs at 120, you would lose half of your inputs. This is not the case in Apex Legends. We process variable uh, rates of inputs fine. As a side note, the higher FPS in Apex, the higher your bandwidth usage is as a result. Interesting. Okay, so we discussed some possible downsides that come with increasing server tick rate. But what about the upside of going from 20 hertz to 60 hertz? Come on, respawn. Wouldn't that make the service three times faster and three times better? Just do it. Based on our findings, it would not result in a meaningful different experience, and we want to explain why. For the sake of argument, let's assume that you're averaging 50 millisecond ping or latency. Remember that your ping measures the speed of the full round trip between your machine and the server. So assuming that there's no other problems with fluctuating latency or hardware lag, display devices introducing 20 to 50 millisecond delay, the server will receive your inputs 25 milliseconds after you press a button or flick your mouse. <coughs> Since our uh, servers are 20 hertz, they update the world state every 50 milliseconds. In the worst case scenario, your inputs will be processed by the server after 75 milliseconds. Figure out what the 75 millisecond delay actually means in terms of experience. You have to think about your frame rate. The math here can get tricky, but remember that 60 frames per second game, each frame takes about 16 milliseconds, 1000 milliseconds in each second, etc. If your inputs are being processed by the server after 70 milliseconds, as in our example above, the game is running 60 milli, uh, frames per second. That means the lag between the input and the impact on the game is about five frames. Um, rounded to five frames since there's no such thing as half frame. If you do the same calculation by a 60 hertz server, you get 41.67 milliseconds for a maximum delay between the input. Um, yeah, so this is the calculation there. It's definitely better than 75 milliseconds, but what does it result in as far as the frame rate goes? Let's again assume you're running at 60 frames. Each frame takes 16 milliseconds. So now the lag between your inputs and server recognizing them is about three frames. Uh, 41 rounded up to three frames since there's no such thing as a half frame, okay? Put all that math together and you realize the 20 hertz servers result in about five frames of delay and 60 hertz servers result in three frames of delay so for triple the bandwidth and the cpu cost you have to save you only save two frames worth of latency in the base best case scenario the upside is is there but it isn't massive and it wouldn't be anything for the issue it wouldn't do anything for issues that are tied to plain old lag like getting shot while in cover isp level issues bugs Hit reg, etc. Our example ex uh, examined the upside of going from 20 to 60 frames. You can follow the math for other jumps, like from 20 to 30 or even 40, and you'll find that the gains in the frame rate would similarly be quite small. You need to increase tick rate very drastically before you can really start to feel it. Even the jump from 20 to 60 would feel like a difference between 58 to 60. This difference does 
is it nothing? Um, but we sincerely believe that it isn't enough to prioritize tick rate changes over the more efficient improvements we could be making. So basically they're saying that tick rate, upgrading the, 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 the Hertz to higher, is not gonna be as beneficial as people think. So they're putting their efforts in other areas. Our closing thoughts. We want to close by acknowledging something which is very real and general frustration that online issues cause players when you have to deal with lag or no reg or slow mo, mo service it sucks it takes you out of the game and you can be very demotivating for you when you try to grind rank or make some clutch plays with your friends or just have a relaxing evening part of the challenge about talking about online issues then is that when we start explaining our systems our stance or issues like lag compensation or tick rate it can start to feel really frustrating for players who just want the game to be better <clears throat> if you have issues with latency, crash bugs, or account corruption issues, or any other challenges that you come up against while playing Apex, you probably don't want to hear about we're not doing what we're not doing. Uh, ultimately, we just want to make the game better. The better the online experience is for you, the more people will play the game, which allows us to keep doing the job we love. This is why throughout this blog, we've shared a number of improvements that we're pursuing in the near future, including using real-time alerts, Implementing tools for identifying servers, focusing on slow mo servers, reducing latency for better uh, optimization, fixing hit reg, um, uh, bugs, and building automated detection tools. But we want you to know that these aren't the only things we're doing. We are working with our partners for server level, from the server level to the ISP level, to improve and invest in our online infrastructure. With the ultimate goal of seeing players report fewer issues and better overall experience. We intend to say more about these efforts in the future posts when we've begun to see those efforts come to fruition. Our hope is that we start to communicate more with you about the issues that concern us. We'll begin share more of our common of a common language to talk about root causes of the issues we're dealing with. That's why we wrote this blog to post. Uh, blog post. We hope it explains our thought process and demystifies the technology technical difficulties of running an online shooter. And we hope it starts uh, um, is the start of more conversation to come. Thank you for reading, Sammy. So very long post, very technical, as they said. Um, but a lot of information there. And I think it does give us good insight on what they're doing. One of the things I appreciate with Respawn is I feel like, you know, and people have their opinions on this, but I feel like they're a team that really um, wants to build a good game and want to build a good experience for their their players so um and i feel like the things that they've shared over and over again i feel they're going in the right direction do they miss it sometimes i think they do um but not because of lack of trying and probably why i'm stuck with this game i've stuck with this game for two years because i truly believe they are working on something really great um i'm excited for season nine with arena modes and um you know the new ch changes to the olympus map and we're getting back world's edge as well so a lot of changes that they're doing i feel like the game i was like i was telling uh, my friend mojo critical earlier like i feel like this game has the potential to be very big it was a slow burn over the last two years to get to this point but i feel like they um they're they're pulling off a marvel avengers kind of move where they're, they've been built into an end game and um, this game is on all consoles at the moment. We have PC, we have Origins, we have Steam, we have Nintendo Switch, we have mobile coming. Um, they're adding more maps, planning the goal to add more maps to arena mode. So very well done to them. Um, and I give them props and the whole team on what they're working on. So um, yeah, we'll see what, what uh, the future holds. I'll be back on Monday, like I said, at 11 p.m. Eastern time. So be sure to check it out then. And to follow my Instagram at the Hybrid Geek for daily video game content. And as always, don't stop being awesome.